Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Thursday, the 26th of August, 2021. And we're producing our gold and silver morning update and price forecast. The United States House has passed its $3.2 trillion package. And not only have we not seen any dramatic rise in gold and silver prices, we're actually seeing them fall back. Why? Look at the NASDAQ and S&P 500. That may suggest a reason, as well as slightly rising treasury yields. With that, let's take a look. Welcome to Illuminati Silver. It's Thursday morning, 26th of August 2021 at 0957am GMT plus one. It's bleak and dull, overcast and really quite depressing outside this morning. But we're sure, lurking behind those clouds, is a sun waiting to emblazon us with its phenomenal heat. Well, the economy undergoing phenomenal heat, we hear you ask. The world's economy's supply chain problems keep getting worse, according to Bloomberg. What's this all about? A supply chain crunch that was meant to be temporary now looks like it will last well into next year as the surging Delta variant upends factory production in Asia and disrupts shipping posing more shocks to the world's economy. Manufacturers reeling from shortages of key components and higher raw material and energy costs are being forced into bidding wars to get space on vessels, pushing freight rates to records and prompting some exporters to raise prices or simply cancel shipments altogether. We cannot get enough components. We can't get containers. Costs have been driven up tremendously, said Christopher Tse, Chief Executive Officer of Hong Kong-based Musical Electronics Limited, which makes consumer products from Bluetooth speakers to Rubik's Cubes. What does this mean? For Apple's launches of its M1 and M2 chips later this year. We've already seen the M1 chip in iPads and its base desk computers and one or two Laptops, but they were supposed to be launching September, October. Some further hardware. Will it be affected? We suspect not, because we believe Apple purchased all the chips it needed a year ago. Tsei said the cost of magnets used in the puzzle toy have risen by about 50% since March, increasing the production cost by 7%. I don't know if we can make money from your Rubik's Cubes because prices keep changing. Oh dear, the end of the world is nigh, because we may be deprived of our Rubik's Cube. Tensions flare over $7 trillion currency. Markets trade dropouts. What's that? An end to the global currency market's four-year quest to crack down on a controversial trading practice that allows dealers to back out of transactions if prices move against them. Looks further away than ever. What is this all about? The committee overseeing a voluntary code of conduct in a market worth nearly seven trillion a day, note that, seven trillion a day, released new guidelines on so-called last look earlier this month. But these principles have only stoked a new wave of pushback from traders frustrated at their framing. Liquidity provider XTX Markets, a member of the Global Foreign Exchange Committee's working group on last look, critiqued the consultative process and labelled the paper a missed opportunity to settle the issue. Last look is akin to trying to pay for food at a grocery store, but being told the store won't sell it to you at the price listed on the shelf. In foreign exchange, the bedrock of global finance and commerce, dealers sometimes say they'll buy or sell a currency at a certain price, but after a trader accepts that bid or offer, the dealer backs out. Unfathomable. Try saying that quickly. Amazing. Do you know, these dealers, whether they be merchant bank dealers trading all sorts of commodities, currencies or equities, to be able to say, this is my bid offer, 
you accept it and then say, oh, I've changed my mind because the market suddenly moved against you, is not a practice that should be either encouraged or even allowed. A deal is a deal is a deal. And as we say in the United Kingdom, a gentleman's word is his bond. Doesn't seem to happen in these sorts of markets. Now, going back to shortages, from shortages from chips to paper are threatening Germany's recovery too. Now, we mentioned yesterday about German retail sales figures being high. Or was it the day before? Might have been the day before. Well, Germany's economic recovery is coming under threat from a persistent global supply squeeze and rising COVID-19 infection numbers. A key measure of business confidence in Europe's largest economy by the Munich-based IFO Institute slipped to 99.4 in August. The drop was bigger than economists had predicted. It's quite clear that the growth outlook will have to be revised downwards, IFO President Clemens Fuest told Bloomberg TV on Wednesday. He said shortages in intermediate products weren't just confined to semiconductors, which has hit the nation's dominant auto industry. Do you remember we said that it was interesting that we were getting some relatively good news coming out of Europe, and yet they were talking about inc either increasing or prolonging its QE programmes well beyond February, March of next year. And we suggested they might be privy to additional information. Well, this may just be part of that additional information now coming out. There could also be more. BBC, sports direct owner's new boss offered a £100 million bonus. It's about $140 million. Nice if you can get it. Who said that people aren't paid well in the United Kingdom? Oh, perhaps just the bosses. NHS stops some blood tests due to vile shortages. Uber and union bosses to meet after landmark deal. And Qantas says COVID to cost billions in lost revenue. This Delta variant is having more of an effect than many people think. Car production in July hits lowest level since 1956. Going over to the US, of course, most of the info is Afghanistan. And as mentioned yesterday, US House approves Biden's 3.5 trillion budget blueprint. And we said at the time, this should help gold and silver markets. However, don't be surprised if it goes into the equity markets. And this is what we have seen, and we'll explain why in a second. Dollar up at 92.95, flirting again with that 93 level. Energy prices down just under a dollar each. Stocks in the US up. And yesterday we saw both the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 once again hit all-time highs. They're the beneficiaries at the moment of all this QE to a large extent. Overnight, Nikkei was up, but the other Asia-Pacific markets were broadly down, up to 2%. And this morning, which is still relatively early trading, couple hours trading, we've got most of the indices, well, all of them shown here, down around a third of a percent. Economic news. Yesterday, we had durable goods orders announced minus 0.1%, worse than June's figures at 08 However, better than market expectations of minus 0.5%. Non-defence capital goods orders for July, 0% change compared to a 1% uplift. And remember, we mentioned earlier on Monday, we had the market manufacturing, albeit the flash PMI and the services, which were worse than anticipated. Today, jobless claims. That's where our eyes will be based. We might look at GDP revision, but we suspect that won't change very much. But most of the data coming tomorrow in addition to that, we have Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking at the Jackson Hole Symposium, as they call it, and may give us an indication as to what the central bank is planning. Gold, over the last 24 hours, down $9 at $17.85. If we look at it compared to Friday's close, it's still up because it closed at 1782 but it's now only up $3. You can see it has fallen right back. 
Strange that on the announcement of the news. Silver, 1724, that's in pounds. In dollars, silver is down 13 cents at 23.67. If we compare that, Friday's close at 23.05, it's still quite a healthy 62 cents higher. Currencies taking a little bit of a hit, but still a market cap above 2 trillion. With Bitcoin now down to 46,855, it was skirting 50,000 just a couple of days ago. And we're seeing a mixed bag of pluses and minuses at this moment, but the minuses are slightly in dominance. Going briefly back to gold, 1785 current price. You have resistance at the 100 day moving average of 1809 and then the 200 day moving average of 18. 11, 12. You have support there at the 10 day moving average of 1786, which it's just marginally dipped below. So if it goes lower than 1786 for a few cents, or I should say rather a few dollars in the case of gold, then we could actually see a further fall back then to around 1750. But there are one or two interim stages before we get to that level and hopefully it won't reach that level. Silver 2367 at the moment it has support at the 2355 level which is the 10 day moving average and considerable resistance some way off actually at the 200 day moving average of 2586. That's it for now. Have a great day. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign Enjoy your Thursday. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.